welcome. This is our Ash Wednesday service. We are pre-recording it so that you can see it at a time that works for you. Uh, we hope that you will look at it at least by 12 o'clock on uh, Ash Wednesday or sometime later in the afternoon or evening. Uh, you will need to receive, and hopefully you may have gotten one from snail mail or through the mail uh, for your bulletin because you will find that you will want to follow along. And also there is a place in the bulletin that has the examination of individual sins and there's a list of things there to read and then following up on the back part of the bulletin. So before we begin, it would be helpful if you had a copy of the Ash Wednesday Bulletin in your possession. Uh, this is the beginning of Lent. This is our time in which we reflect and consider those things that we need to confess to God to be right with God going forward. Let us pray. God of love, as in Jesus Christ you gave yourself to us so that we may give ourselves to you, living according to your holy will. Keep our feet firmly in the way where Christ leads. Make our mouths speak the truth that Christ teaches us. Fill us with the life that is Christ within us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blow the trumpet. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged. Gather the children, including nursing infants. Let even the bride and the bridegroom rise from their nuptials. Gather everyone. And you ministers, weep. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, saying, Spare your people, O Lord. Don't let others look at us and wonder where you are, Lord. Spare, oh, spare your people. Return to me with all your heart, says the Lord, yet even now return to me. Rend your hearts with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. People, O Lord, return to you. Turn now to us, and forget not your heritage, for you are God gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Let us pray. Almighty God, you love all your children and do not want to see them punished for their sins. Help us to face up to ourselves, admit where we are wrong, and raise our eyes with confidence to your mercy. In Jesus Christ the Lord, amen.
our words of invitation to enter into Ash Wednesday contrition. We are here on this Ash Wednesday to repent of our sins, intercede on behalf of a sinful world, and seek God's face in the renewal of our lives and of this world. Today marks the beginning of Lent, which you can read about in your bulletin. As part of our service today, we will have an extended period of confession and examination of our lives in the light of God's grace. As a sign of your penitence, you are invited to trace the sign of the cross on your forehead, your lips, and heart. As you trace the sign of the cross on your forehead, your lips, and heart, it is an ancient symbol of humility and grief. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, I shall make them white as snow. Coming from Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. In penitence and faith, in the goodness of God, who wants good things for us, let us confess our sins. Please pray with me. Merciful God, your word is our way of truth and life. Create in us hearts that are clean and put your Holy Spirit within us so that we may receive your grace and declare your praise forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. False and true worship. Shout out! Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush? and to lie in sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them? and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Maybe you have heard of comments similar to these. I hate going to family reunions because my uncle always airs his dirty laundry and we feel embarrassed for his 
aunt, for our aunt. Social media is so annoying sometimes. Is it really necessary for people to air their dirty laundry in public? My sister is, very, is a very jealous person and takes every opportunity to air my dirty laundry in public. You know, you totally embarrassed me last night. It might make you feel good but everybody was so uncomfortable when you aired our dirty laundry in public. We hear it off and on in normal conversations about airing one's dirty laundry, and we do have kind of an understanding of what it means, but what does it really mean? By definition, to air one's dirty laundry is to talk about something publicly that should be kept private or to say some very embarrassing things in front of other people. So what does dirty laundry have to do with Ash Wednesday and observing the 40 days of Lent? I think all of us have some dirty laundry that we need to confess to God. Ash Wednesday and the 40 days of Lent give us an extended time to reflect on how we are living and to identify places, actions, attitudes, and behaviors that we need to confess, repent, change, and to get right with God. In our Isaiah passage, the prophet was trying to help people realize that they were going about the business of fasting in the wrong way. Actually, it's understood that they were participating falsely in the spiritual discipline. Their actions were in accordance with what was expected, but it was their intentions, their motivation that was wrong. It was just not about going through the motions or something done by rote with no connection to one's soul or spirit. Fasting is meant to be a response of penitence and contrition, seeking God's favor. When done for the right reasons and the right motives, fasting helped the Hebrew people be aware of their sinful condition. When sin and trans transgressions are acknowledged and brought to the surface, when the dirty laundry is aired, our sins being confessed openly to God, they hit the light of day. It is then that God can help bring healing and wholeness into our lives by forgiving us of our wrong behavior and putting us on the right path. Maybe it doesn't happen much anymore, but it used to be a time when we used nature's dryer for drying our clothes. And some of the benefits of hanging up laundry outside to dry was that the clothes didn't shrink. And according to the washer-dryer combos, the sun is a natural sanitizer. So if you dry clothes under the sun, they smell cleaner and fresher. Sun can bleach clothes and make whites whiter. The sun can also disinfect your clothes. The ultraviolet rays of sun from the sunlight should kill any germs that are still on your clothing. So as we start with Ash Wednesday and continuing through the season of Lent, we are to be reviewing and reflecting on what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. We are to be honest with God. We are to confess our sins openly to God. We need to air our dirty laundry to God. It does not have to be shared with others or openly on social media. We are to be authentic and confess our sins, repent, asking for forgiveness, and change our behavior. Consider, if I had asked the church family to come by and drop off their dirty laundry, and if the contents of what's in this basket was that dirty laundry, I wonder what kinds of things we would discover that we have that needs to be confessed and be repented and then change of behavior. There 
might be some things similar to those that you see in your bulletin. In just a moment, I am going to invite you to take some time and look at the things that you find in your bulletin under the examination of individual sins. You'll find that there are sins that we have against our relationship with God, sins against the relationship we have with each other, and also sins against our relationship with those outside of the church. And if you thought that was enough in and of itself, <clears throat> you'll discover that we have the Lenten form of self-examination. So throughout the 40 days of Lent, you will be invited to consider some of the other things that we need to confess. And then, as if this was not enough of a list, you may have some that have come to mind that you want to share with God. And you're welcome to write those at the bottom. So I have asked Ryan to play for us so that we can have some time to consider those things that we want to confess to God.
Let us pray together. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, O oh God. We have not listened to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us O oh God. We confess to you, O oh God, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives. We, we confess, confess to you, you O oh God, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We, we confess, confess to you, O oh God, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We, we confess, confess to you, you O oh God, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work, we, we confess, confess to you, you O God. God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, we, we confess, confess to you, O God. God. Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done, for our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, O God. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, O God. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathe into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of tenderness and strengthen us to face our mortality that we may reach with confidence for your mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord, who, say, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The charge for today is about the sin shredder. And it has to do with Dottie, who was a single young adult who came for counsel. She wasn't the bit, least bit hesitant about sharing herself openly. 
the counselor was struck by what seemed to be an almost compulsive need to reveal the garbage of her life in a lurid detail. Dottie would pause occasionally in her X-rated recital and say with a confident smile, now I don't want you to get any idea that I'm feeling guilty about this. Then the counselor began to observe some body language from Dottie. She kept taking sheets of Kleenex from the box that was on the side table, not to wipe away tears, naturally not since she felt no guilt, but one by one shredding the tissue into little pieces. The pile of, on the table grew higher and higher. What fascinated the counselor was most what fascinated the counselor most was that she was completely unaware of the shredding ritual. After a while, the counselor rather abruptly said, excuse me, Dottie, I don't believe your story about not feeling guilty all about this garbage in your life. In fact, I have the feeling that you, your pile of guilt is as high as the mountain of Kleenex you have made on the table there. She looked down in shocked disbelief. Obviously embarrassed, she sat silently, staring at the shredded tissues. The counselor was silent, but the Holy Spirit spoke loud and clear. Slowly, Dottie reached for another Kleenex, and this time for its, private, its proper use. You're right, she sniffled. I think I was hoping I'd not feel guilty if I was just honest about my sins. But deep down, I knew better. And I guess I was really hoping you wouldn't let me get away with it. So the counselor and Dottie read Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, where Paul describes Christ's work on the cross. Dottie came to understand that she didn't need to tear up either her sins or her Kleenex. Christ had sh shredded all her sins on the cross and set her free from their guilt if she would but confess them to him and trust what he had done for her. So brothers and sisters, I give you the charge to take your bulletins, look over the things that are mentioned, take the next 40 days of Lent and confess those things that are appropriate so that you too can be free because of the work of Jesus Christ. Amen.